I have obsessed for so long about being as productive as I can possibly be. And lately, I've noticed that some of the tips I've been giving people in real life have really been helping them change their lives to be more productive and achieve more things in less time. And so today, I wanted to just have a little bit of a rant with you to tell you the things that I've been suggesting to other people that have had these big impacts and these big effects. So there's probably about two or three things that I'm going to get into today, but I'm just going to kind of casually sit back and speak with you about the things that I've noticed have made me much more productive as well as the people around me. So let's get into it. First general thing is about making your space more conducive to your goals. There's something really, really simple about what I'm about to say, but it's so true is that what you make easier in your environment will happen more and what you make more difficult in your environment will happen less. So let's start with the kind of first example. If you leave your gym equipment out, or let's say you have like a home, like you have a couple dumbbells or whatever, and you wanna work out at home, you're just kind of getting into that. If you leave them out, even if it might be a bit of an eyesore sometimes, you're gonna use them a lot more than if you keep them in some cupboard somewhere. Now, the same is true, like I just mentioned, in the opposite sense, where if you have your video game controller always on your couch, you know what you're gonna do when you sit on that couch? You are going to pick up the video game controller. And it's like this with almost any anything in terms of productivity, like making progress towards certain goals and making progress in less time. If you're on a diet and the snacks you have in your pantry are the ones that are going to be super high in calories, they're the ones that are not super good for your health, those are the ones you're going to eat. But the opposite is true as well. You know, if you have high quality meats and high quality fruits and whatever, that's what you're going to consume. And so when it comes to actual work, it's so much better to have an environment where it's easy to pick up the stuff and go. Like one of the things about filming for you is that I used to make it so difficult on myself. I used to have this like tripod that I'd keep in the trunk of my car. I live in an apartment and I'm on the 11th floor of the apartment and my car is parked on P5. So I have to go so far like 16 stories, let's say, right? I have to go all the way down there to get my tripod to then set it up. And then I have to set up these lights and then I have to set up my camera and I have to get everything ready and blah, 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 to set up my environment where I wanted to shoot all this kind of stuff. And so I was shooting a whole lot less. If you look back at the beginning of my channel, like I was not nearly as consistent as I am now. And one of the reasons why I'm so consistent is because I made my environment conducive to when I have something that I really want to say to you, I pick up the camera, I turn on my light and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to just talk to you. I have my mic right here that I just put on my hat. I don't even worry about anything. Like I just make sure that I have the thing that I want to say to you and make sure it's of value, double check that. But then when it's, I'm ready to go, my environment is conducive to making that happen. And so I leave my camera out and ready. And as soon as I want to turn it on and film, boop, turn it on, ready to go. Here's a video. So that's the first thing I want to talk about is making your environment conducive to what you want to do. One thing I mentioned earlier, that's again, I'm just rambling now, but one thing that's really important is not caring what other people think. So when I talked about that dumbbell idea, it might be really impractical to have dumbbells that are like sitting in the middle of your kitchen. It might be, you know, you might trip on them. I'm not recommending you do it. You do that. That's obviously a safety hazard or whatever, but you're way more likely to touch and notice and use those dumbbells if they're somewhere so painfully obvious that you have to think about them all the time. And it might even be a good thing that you're like, oh man, my friends are going to come over and they're going to see the fact. Like, for example, I used to think, oh, I'm going to have someone come over and they're going to see in my room that I have this huge soft box light and like all my lighting setups and everything. I don't know what they're going to think, whatever. But that came to my mind, like the fact that they were going to have an opinion. And at first that might seem like a bad thing, but it's actually really a good thing because that means I'm thinking about my soft box light. I'm thinking about my lighting setup. I'm thinking about my camera setup. I'm thinking about all this stuff more often. It's taking up more cognitive real estate, which means I'm going to use that more often. The same thing is true with the opposite. If you have things out that you want to avoid, like it's going to be harder to avoid them. If you want to stop smoking weed or whatever it is, don't have a bong, don't have a pipe, don't have weed, don't have a lighter, like don't have those things. And then you won't do them. The next main point about productivity is asking yourself what can be stacked. What are things that you can do at the same time? For example, if you know that you want to watch some sort of like educational YouTube video or motivational YouTube video or something like that, or you know, you want to read a book or you want to listen to an audiobook, do that while you're walking on a treadmill. If you also have a weight loss goal, or you also have an activity goal or a steps goal, do that while you're walking. Don't just sit on the couch and be like, okay, I'm going to listen to my audiobook and like close my eyes. Like that might be relaxing. Sure. And that might be something you need. And that's a point I get to in a second, but something about productivity is there's so many things that can be stacked. So many things. Like for example, when I'm language learning, right? What I'm currently learning is Japanese. I love that language. And I, I listen to it for listening practice as often as I can. Sometimes I get more time. Sometimes I get less, but the days I get more are believe it or not the days I go to work. And the reason why is because guess what I'm listening to in my car. When I'm driving, I, my, my drive, depending on, on what time I go, my drive is anywhere from 20 minutes to 55 plus minutes. That's 20 to 55 plus minutes that I get to listen to Japanese on the way and on the way back. So understand that I've stacked the fact that I have to transport myself from A to B 
what's some way I can passively add productivity to this thing that I have to do, to this necessity. Now, of course, driving isn't necessarily itself productive, but it's something that needs to be done. And so that kind of leads me into my next point, which is passive productivity. So it's hard to come up with too many examples outside of the one I mentioned, like, like something that you're listening to, but there's so much content, there's so many good things that you should be listening to, that you should be consuming and just reiterating to your brain over and over and over because they say, we need to remember more than we need to learn. We've already learned the thing, it's about remembering. And so how can you reinforce and reiterate these messages? If you have YouTube premium, for example, like I do, I can just listen to anyone that I enjoy listening to that motivates me or teaches me or entertains me or whatever it is, whatever I'm trying to accomplish at that time. For example, a lot of the messages that I say to you, if you vibe with them, if you have YouTube premium and you can listen to things while your phone's locked or whatever, then you can just play this video. You can play anything that motivates you or reminds you where you want to go or you could listen to a podcast that you've listened to a hundred times not because you're trying to learn something new but because you just want to reinforce to your brain hey this is who i am this is what i believe these are my intentions it's reinforcing to your brain these messages and that's how you can be passively productive now another way you can be productive is asking yourself what can be streamlined when i get home from work the first thing i do i, I don't check i don't check my email i don't check my phone i don't whatever the first thing that i do is get my bag ready for tomorrow the first thing that I do, I walk in the door, I put my stuff down and I get my bag ready for tomorrow. Now, in my case, that includes, let's say, uh, a change of clothes if I'm going to work out. That includes um, food that I've prepared at the end of the end of the beginning of the week, whatever. Um, that includes my computer, that includes any books that I'm reading, that includes anything that I need for tomorrow. That's the first thing I do because that way I know it gets done. I walk in the door and that's my trigger. Coming in the door, taking off my shoes, that's my trigger to take steps towards making tomorrow productive. And so if you can streamline, especially streamline tomorrow, it's so beneficial. And so like, if you want to wake up the next day and have a productive day that starts with the night before. And so for me, what starts even before the night before is the afternoon before. And so it's like, okay, as soon as I walk in the door in that afternoon, after, after work, I normally get home between sometimes between four and 6 PM. First thing I do is I streamline my whole day for tomorrow by getting everything ready immediately. Now, the next thing I kind of want to rant and riff on is that sometimes doing what you want to do can be productive, but you have to be careful. Look, if you want to, for example, watch a movie that's going to help you relax or help you chill out, whatever, that can be a really good thing because that means the total amount of productivity you might have in the next 24 hours because you're not burning out. You're not constantly thinking, damn, I just wish I could watch this movie. I wish I could just sit down and kind of just like chill out for a bit. If you let yourself do that, that can be really, really powerful. If you zoom out and look at the productivity for the entirety of 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, whatever, if you had that period, it could be very beneficial, but it can easily become a crutch when you start justifying wanting to do random shit that's not really helping you you know you had extra gas left in the tank but you're you you gave into a temptation and you just kind of derailed yourself because something was a little bit more stimulating than the work you had to do you know it was kind of like look like video games is there like i talked about the, the controller sitting on the couch and so you pick it up and you start playing it because it was more stimulating than reading the book that you needed to read or listening to the educational youtube video that you're supposed to be listening to or whatever it may be so it's kind of hard to give a general guideline for everybody out there but in general if you have certain cues to do things that you know will streamline your next day like i mentioned before like that will be helpful but also allow yourself once you have not the things off your checklist to consider whether or not taking time to relax and taking time to do what you enjoy taking time to whatever stimulate your sheep dopamine in this way or that way you know on occasion of course on occasion ask yourself if that's going to actually contribute to the next segment of productivity and set rules around it if you say okay i'm gonna watch this one movie let's say a two-hour movie whatever i'm gonna watch this two-hour movie and then i'm going to go to bed or get back to work whatever if you start trying to negotiate yourself out of the initial rules that you set that is the addiction that is the temptation that is the devil coming into and I, I use the example of the devil all the time the devil the snake whatever that is the negative side that is the weaker side of you trying to negotiate the better side of you out of productivity or out of results so just keep that in mind the next thing about productivity that i've really noticed and i've really observed is that 